with two Olympic gold medalists, we always expected a very technical boxing match. Did the fight go the way that you thought it would? С двумя олимпийскими чемпионами в ринге мы всегда ожидаем высокотехнический матч. Прошла, прошел ли бой именно так, как ты предполагал? Он прошел именно так, как я предлагал, предполагал. Было пару моментов от Энтони, когда он зажимал, но это, это незначительные вещи. The fight went exactly the way I expected it to go. There were a couple of moments when Anthony pushed me hard, but just nothing special. Was that the fight you expected to have from Anthony Joshua tonight? Это то, что ты ожидал от Энтони Джошуа? Не, пожестче ожидал. No, I thought, Может быть, you... я просто был готов к этому. I thought he was gonna be tougher. What's good family? So smash the like button, subscribe and lick off the bell. Wow. We down bad. AJ fans down bad right now. You sick. Rock hard. And I hate to break it to you, man. Like I said in my live stream. Yeah? What do we know? Your man's the YB was the only Donny. Not one Don. Oh, YB, you ain't got no sources. You wish I didn't have no sources. I was the one telling you, man. Yeah? Told you 100%. I heard from someone close in Usit's camp. They were stroking themselves off. Rock hard. Yeah? Usyk had his lipstick all the way out for Anthony Joshua. And I heard they was coming to put one on AJ's chin early and get him scary. Lo and behold, what did we see? No word of a lie. For in the first minute, I think, Usyk came straight out, straight left hand, boom, AJ got rocked. Now, I'm not saying that defined the whole fight, but huh, you can't say it didn't, did can you? I mean, that straight left hand from Usyk really was the whole fight. And the fact he had the audacity to come raging out. Especially after I told you, man, this. It's not like, oh, it's a big, well, don't get me wrong. For most channels, this was this was a big mystery. But for the YB Dons, all of us, man, we already knew this. Because I already told you. The video, in fact, the videos are still up. Usyk, rock hard for AJ. Usyk planning on coming out there, stick it, half stick it on AJ, and trying to get a Ruiz repeat. I'm not being funny. In that 12th round, it weren't far off, was it? It really weren't far off a Ruiz repeat. And I believe if AJ had been concussed this time, you best believe it would have been exactly the same as a Ruiz fight. I mean, I mean, we nearly got there anyway, if that makes sense. <laughs> AJ was barely clinging on at the end. So, in my opinion, add the concussion in, it would have been a Ruiz repeat, no doubt. A few times AJ was stumbling backwards and whatnot. But anyway, let's get to the topic of this video. Like you've seen by the title, like you've seen at the start of this video... You sick. Showing no respect. And I'm not saying no respect in a good way. I like the disrespect here. I like it. This is how boxing should be. AJ, he loves, he stays broken. Yeah? Never mind. It's one thing for your opponent. It's not, that's how an opponent's supposed to be. An opponent should be rock hard for their ops. AJ, stay rock hard for them, if that makes sense. AJ loves the idea. Of encouraging his ops. He loves the idea of supporting them. And making sure they're all nice and comfortable. Oh here's the belts with Andy Ruiz. And he was doing the same kind of stuff this week. Now I'm not saying that. It matters if you show him your belts. But it's about the mentality. Oh it's always loosey goosey with AJ. And for many years. And even recently. When I've been critiquing this. About how there's no gully man. How there's no gully. There's no gulliness. There's no on There's no on sightness to his camp and what guess what you guess what you goofy AJ fan said oh YB you know he wins every fight and you know he got three belts and you need to back off because AJ and Rob McCrappen's team and AJ's team they're the number one team and they're undefeated and all this kind of stuff oops now what are you gonna say then don't tell me oh but YB you know he's oh, but he, he did have three belts and uh, oops I warned you, I said, you can't rest on your laurels, you can't sit there and say what's happened in the past, oh he's got three belts, that don't mean squat, well guess what, I can tell you who it didn't mean nothing to, you sick, <laughs> oops, guess, guess how having three belts and, 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 and this at the other, and being an Olympic champion, how did that work out against you sick, oh it didn't did it, like I told you it wouldn't, they don't care, not interested, but you might never want to listen. You just think that things are always going to be Irie and Chris. And I can't blame you. Because you, the reason you man think it's all 
life's just this one whatever. It's because AJ gives that vibe. Oh, it's all cool and it's all calm and relaxed. Now, I'm not sure whether it's because AJ just got so much money now. Because even after this loss, he don't really seem bothered, does he? In fact, he actually thinks he was winning the fight. Oh, yeah, don't worry, we're just going to go back to the drawing board. And In fact, he didn't even say that. He said, oh, we're just going to... I'm not sure what he said, but he didn't make out... He didn't... He hasn't acted like he needs some big changes. From his post-fight, I got the feeling that he thinks he was winning the fight. And it was until the, only until the 8th round when his eye got hurt that there was a problem. What? This fight was abysmal from the jump. Ever since Yusit came out with his lipstick out and popped you in your face... It was downhill. Uphill, sorry, from there. You won at best. and I, uh, not, not because you won the rounds, by the way. When I say AJ won three rounds, yeah, that's because I give him a few for the sake of it. Not because I can sit there and tell you, yeah, man, he, he set pace in these rounds. He wiped the floor with music in these rounds. I'm giving AJ, AJ three rounds just because in a 12-round fight, he probably won three kind of thing. Not because I can sit there and say, cause it, I, can't even, I couldn't even tell you the rounds they were, if that makes sense. I couldn't tell you, oh no, round three was this. And for example, in the Pulev fight, we all know it was round nine and round three. I can't tell you that in this one. I couldn't tell you squat. I couldn't tell you, couldn't tell you nothing about nothing. And the worst thing is, the only rounds I can tell you something about AJ was more to do with you sit backing off, if that makes sense. The times AJ looked good, he didn't look good because of what he was doing. He looked good when you sit's legs looked like they was gassing. It wasn't because AJ started doing something magical. Usyk looked like he was gassing out, which made me rock hard, thinking, oh, uh, but that, that should never be the case. AJ should have been the one making his luck. We shouldn't have been there, myself included, shouldn't have been there celebrating the fact Usyk looked tired, because guess what? When that round seven and six, seven, eight weared off and it, he wasn't tired, oops, we was back in, back, rubbing up Shit's Creek with not even a bit of a paddle. That's where we was, 100%. All the way up Shit's Creek with no paddles. Yeah? But anyway, back to the point of this video. I keep digressing. End of the day, you, you heard the video there. You heard him. You sit, got no respect. And when I say no respect, like I said, I mean no respect in a good way. In a competitive way. Yeah? I'm sure there's going to be some goofy dudes who say, Oh, YB, you know, you're reading into this. And oh, YB, it's the language. No, he knows what he's saying. Yeah? This was light work for Usyk. He was there for all of it. And, then, and you know what? In the post-fight conference, these men were getting off all over AJ so bad. AJ was down so bad. Usyk was talking about, yeah, well, we didn't really want to KO him today. We thought we'd save that for the next time. And yeah, we, were, yeah, we weren't really fussed for the KO this time. We, didn't really, we weren't really bothered for it. But it's there, it's there on the plate next time. And it is. I can't lie to you. But it's on that performance today. The KO next time looks like it's on a plate, doesn't it? Call it call, you can't call him a lie, can you? You can't sit here today and say, no, you're lying. The KO wasn't there on the plate. In that 12th round, I don't know what... It's, it's only because of AJ's good chin that he stayed up. That's a fact. If AJ was chinless, he'd have been cold, out cold in that 12th round. For example, when Dillian White fought Joseph Parker, it was that kind of one. He was gassed and one of them ones. Difference is Dillian White went down. AJ was able to hold his feet. But wow, AJ was clinging on. And with no excuses, by the way. This wasn't a case of Ruiz where he's clearly neurologically impaired. No excuses here. No excuses. And AJ was clinging on for dear life in the 12th round. And he wants to talk about how, oh no, it was all fine until the 8th round. What? There was nothing fine about this fight. Not even a bit of it was fine. And I warned people, I warned people. No one wanted to listen. No, it fell on deaf ears. All I heard was, oh no, AJ this, AJ that. And I think at this point, even himself is trying to start, he's, it's almost like he's bought the hype himself. The way, the way you don't see no problems. Listen to the post fight. AJ don't mention no problems. He don't say nothing. He, does, he, he acts as if it was just one of them days. I didn't hear no urgency in his voice after the fight. Now initially, to be fair... When AJ walked out of the ring, yeah, I thought, hmm, I actually like that. Why? Because I thought, when he lost to Ruiz, yeah, it was all out of, oh, I'm going to be a true champion. Oh, I'm not trying to hear that myself. I'd rather hear that you're pissed off. 
Don't, um, um, you best believe what's coming next. All the AJ fans are going to be in my dear in my comments saying, "Oh, why be? No, not everyone's like you." And oh, why be? AJ is humble and he's super duper this, super duper that. That's what's going to be coming next. That's what happened last time. Whenever I offer constructive criticism, it's always, "Oh, why be? AJ is the most perfect. He never he can't put a foot wrong." And this like the other. So, like I said, when he walked out today and didn't do a post fight interview, I was actually encouraged, thinking, "You know what?" That's, this is what he needs now. He needs to be pissed off. Because when you're pissed off, that's when you can fire people. Rob, you're fired. You're crap. You've been holding me back. I'm moving on. See you later. Yeah? Anger can be a good thing when you're moist. And you're caught up in this loyalty BS. All the great fight. Even look at Tyson Fury. He left Ben, ben Davidson, one of his best friends. Who got him out of a bit of a hole he was in. He left him. Moved on. Flourishing now. To his credit. Why can't you do that? What's wrong with you? It's mad. It's weird at this point. It really is weird. I wonder what. I don't know what's going on there with him and Rob. Super weird. It's like some. It's like a bad relationship they're caught in. You know the ones there where the women get whooped or whatever. And they keep going back to the whooping man. Or the woman. Yeah. The man whoops on them. And the man's in jail and whatnot. And they still stay hanging around. It's like what are you doing with that bum? Same principle here. What is AJ doing with his bum? It made me laugh. In the post-fight press conference. McCrappen. Obviously. Obviously McCrappen's been listening to all of the criticism. And he, he thinks he's smart you see. He starts saying oh it's obvious. It's obvious yeah. It's obvious AJ needs to. It's obvious AJ should have been walking down the smaller man. I thought what? No no, no Rob it obviously wasn't obvious to you. To you. Because, number one, you didn't say anything about that in the corner. Which means, guess what? For your whole camp, which, by the way, I've done many videos on, of leaked videos from your training camp. None of your training camp was based on walking down the smaller man, putting an authoritative jab out. Never once in the corner did we hear you say, AJ, stiffen your jab up. And besides, to be honest, saying things in the corner, having to apply a whole strategy in the corner is no good. You're meant to be training it. AJ should know the jab needs to be authoritative. AJ should know you've got to walk down a smaller man. Your whole camp should have been based on that. Instead, what did we see? We saw AJ in camp with a cruiserweight dancing around the place. Yeah, that's what we saw. I've leaked the videos. They're on my channel, 100%. We didn't see no videos until two days before the fight. When AJ heard my video and thought, oh, I better put a picture out. And we saw him finally standing toe to toe. But guess what? I knew it was a fake because... It's no good sending me, it's no good posting a picture, AJ, of you in the pocket for the first time in, in about two years when you haven't been training like that. Because guess what? We know you haven't been training like that because the minute you got an air with you sick, you didn't want to stand with him even a bit. There was no toe-to-toe -to -toe of you sick tonight. That's the last place you wanted to be. And in fact, every time you did end up on the inside, you ended up getting lit up because your defense is leaky. Rob McCrappen, listen, that's Rob McCrappen's number one style, leaky. I've been saying it for years, I've done videos on it. Inside game, leaky. And now you've got your man Yusik showing no respect and rightfully so. This is a competitive disrespect. AJ, he said, listen, I expected more. For all the hype you've got. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the hype isn't AJ's fault, but nonetheless, all the hype and all the heavyweight this and all the athletic phenom this, that, the other. All the heavy hands. Yusik was expecting more. And I, I, I agree. In fact, all of your fans agree, AJ. You didn't dig deep tonight. I'm sorry you didn't. I didn't see no digging deep. I didn't see no, it's me or him. Half of the reason I bet on you, yeah. Even despite having Rob in your corner. I thought, nah, I'm going to bet on AJ because I know that if push comes to shove, I know seven, eight rounds in, if he's down on the cards, if he's down bad, I know four rounds to go, three rounds to go, two rounds to go, one round to go. I just can't see him losing. I know he's going to dig deep and just start unloading and go hell for leather. Like he did in the Klitschko fight. That's what I thought we had that guarantee red, red button to push. If all else fails, I know AJ will have a scrap. And on, on that basis, if AJ starts getting stuck in with you, it's game over for him. But there was no red button push. There was no spite. You was happy to go out sad. You was happy to go out down bad. You was happy to go out on the ropes getting lit up by a cruiserweight. Literally, that's how the fight ended. The fight ended. In fact, how the fight ended summed up the fight. Summed up how your career's going. Sad. Going out sad. 
you was having to bob and weave on the on the, on on the ropes, and then you kind of stuck your tongue out, stuck your tongue out. You just nearly got knocked out by a cruiserweight. What's that to stick your tongue out about? Wow. Wow. And you want to sit in the press conference talking about, uh, yeah, it just sounding like it was all, all pretty good. And it was all, yeah, it was all not too bad until whatever. Oh, why be, you know, his eye was bad. Well, the eye weren't bad until, okay, let's say the last four rounds were the eye, which I don't agree with, but whatever. You're right, the last four rounds was the eye. So what was the first eight rounds then? Oops. Because your eye was just fine. In fact, to add insult to injury, Usyk was cut. I thought, looking after the fight, yeah? Usyk's cuts were worse than AJ's eye. Why it wasn't A AJ could have won the fight on cuts. Them cuts was bad, in my opinion. If AJ had to put a bit of a stiffer jab and had, and had hunted the cuts, he would have stopped Usyk. Because he managed to cut him, not doing, put, not putting much ever, ever in, not putting much spite in. But anyway, I don't want to keep digressing. But at the end of the day, man, you heard Usyk at the start of this video. Usyk showing disrespectful, sorry, showing competitive disrespect. He expected more, and I can't lie to you. So did all of AJ's fans. That was pathetic how you went out. Usyk was expecting a half decent. To be honest. I'm not saying Usyk was expecting to lose, but I'm sure if he'd lost tonight, he wouldn't have been that shocked, personally speaking. Maybe I'm wrong. And to be fair to Usyk, how he fought, he didn't fought like a lo loser. Look at Joseph Parker, the way Joseph Parker turned up. That's how I thought Usyk was going to turn up. So I have to give him credit, to be fair. I have to give him a lot of credit. Because most people turn up against AJ, and they... But then again, that's a lie. Ever since Ruiz, anyone who's half sharp, they, they got their rock hard for AJ. And I've been saying this. For the longest. How long have I been saying? When AJ lost to Ruiz, they they should have, they needed to. It was, it was, it was AJ's team needed to bounce back and nip it in the bud, nip all the anxiety, nip all the fear, nip all the all the worry in the bud right there and then. Because now everyone who turns up to fight AJ, they half rock hard, if not all the way rock hard. They all think, yeah, man, I'll go in there, stick one on his chin, and he'll just fall apart and will, which is what happened more or less. Usyk went in there, stuck one on him for a few rounds, and then it, AJ didn't want no more after that. It, it appears like that anyway. Now, I don't think AJ wanted it anyway in that sense. I don't think he... He didn't come to commit anyway, I don't believe. You can just hear it in, in his talk before the fight. Oh, well, we ain't really got a strategy. We're just going in there to win, and that's how it looked, AJ. It looked like he was just going in there to... I don't know what, what you'd call it. Like a sparring session, to be honest. And you've got you sick now. Of all the things to say. Like normally. People say things like. Yeah. He's a great competitor. Whatever else. Guess what. You six earned the right by the way. You six earned the right. To show you no respect. He said listen. I don't know about great competitor. I expected more. I expected him to be tougher. That's the biggest. That was the biggest indictment to be fair. I expected him to be tougher. Which is true. He had you bobbing and weaving. On the ropes. Wow. I'm not surprised he expected you to be tougher. Every time he every time he was on the inside, you ended up clinching and uh, and and jumping in to to clinch as much as he did, if not more. And you're meant to be the big bad. You meant to be the big bad banger. So yeah, I concur with you, sick. He probably, he did. Ex we all expected you to be a bit tougher, to be honest with you. And that's why I've said if you're not going to leave him a crap and. You should retire now, in my opinion. Because your last few fights have proven. There's nothing. There's been nothing good about your last few fights. Anyone who knows boxing knows that there's been nothing good about your last few fights. Nothing good about it. And in fact, they're getting worse. That underlying oomph just ain't there. I've got no... I'm under no illusions. AJ loves to train. I think that's what it is. AJ's become a trained fighter. He loves to train. Loves to keep fit. But ultimately, when it comes to... I mean, he's, he's a multi-millionaire now. He's done that part of the game's achieved. I think AJ loves to compete, as in loves to train, I mean. But when it comes to it, it's one thing loving to compete. It's another thing loving to win and being willing to do anything to win. Competing isn't the same as, I, I you know what I mean, I must win. A lot, of fight, a lot of the reason people get into sport is, I must win to put food on the table. Look at McTapper, for example. McTapper... 
I don't care what no one says. In, in 2013, when, when Tapper was coming up, whenever he got hit, the shots would bounce off. Then he got a load of money, and ever since then, the first thing that lands, he falls apart. Now, AJ isn't that bad, but it's all relative in my opinion. These men, on the way up here, yeah, they're invincible almost. The hunger, the need to get to get financially secure drives them on. They refuse to lose. They can't lose. I can't go back. I've got kids to feed. I can't get knocked out. The minute they get some fame and they get the money, oh, not the fame, the minute they get financially secure, all of a sudden it's not so bad. Well, it's not so bad. If I lose, you know what, I'll come back and I'll have another $30 million fight, which is the truth, isn't it? AJ loses and, well, got another $30 million fight coming. <laughs> no one's died. What's the bit? It's not, I don't see that. And even in the post fight conference, I don't see that big oomph in him. I don't see that, that, you know what I'm saying? I don't see that energy. So yeah, you heard Usyk there. He expected more. He expected tougher. Nothing special. And I can't. Well, well, the reason I'm doing this video, I hope AJ sees this, because what we know is, in based on AJ's post-fight comments, he ain't, he hasn't got it naturally. If that makes sense. AJ getting a whooping off of Usyk wasn't enough for him to switch the button, because he could have think about people. Never mind after the fight. I'm I'm wondering why AJ isn't on it after the fight. But think about it, even during the fight, when Usyk, when the cruiserweight was whooping him in his head, yeah, and walking him down. The button didn't switch then, did it? He didn't think then. Yeah, man. I'm like, who does this guy think he is? If he wants to get, if he wants to get it like that, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? If he wants to trade right hand for right hand, let's trade right hand for right hand. And how about a left hook on the end? Yeah. If he wants to trade right hand and left hook, we'll trade right hand and left hook. Let's see who can right hand and left hook the best. Where was that in there? I didn't see none. I didn't see none of that. What I saw was a dude. Ducking and weaving on the ropes, barely hanging on. But the hairs on his chinny chin chin. That's what I saw. So I'm sitting in now. I'm sitting in now making videos. Essentially trying to get some oomph in AJ. You got your competitor talking about not giving you no respect, talking about how he expected more, how nothing special. I'm sitting there wondering maybe this, maybe I'd make this video and AJ sees that Usyk got no respect for him, a cruiserweight dude. Maybe this will put the fire under his ass, but I don't know. If getting whooped in the head didn't put the fire under his ass, what's going to put the fire under his ass? All this nicey nicey business, all of this moistness, it's moist. I could feel the moistness. I've been feeling it for months and years now. Everyone told me I was being I Y B. You know, you you want everyone to be aggressive, and well, how's that other how's it how's that other way of doing things working out for you? Oops, how is it working out? How's going through the motions working out for you? And I was about to say it's, it's, boxing is a special sport, but it's not really. In all top sports, at the very top, 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 top of sports, look at American football or even football. At the top level, talking about the European Champions League or the World Cup or whatever. At that level, which AJ versus Usyk is, you've got to have that fire. You've got to have that if you want to win the NFL. You've got to have that. If you look at Michael Jordan and whatnot, if you want to have that, and you really like Michael Jordan was nasty, and he's not even boxing, but he was nasty. You do have to. I believe. I'm sorry. I know AJ is trying to rewrite the book. That oh no, look. I mean, look at Tiger Woods. All them man. All them great dons. Yeah, they was all. They all had a nasty streak. Now. Many people, many AJ fans have been telling me over the years, oh, YB, you know, AJ rewrites the book. Yeah, yeah, he's doing it this way. Well, who, is he? It, uh, unfortunately, the current thing says no, he's not. Throughout history, there's never been one fruity tooty, all time great. All of them have had a nasty way about them. All of them have. All of them have, have had that arrogance. None of them, have, none of them, none of them have been happy to stroke their competition off all the time, twenty four seven. Which is what AJ does. Stay stroking, every single one. And it's more recently because when AJ was in there with Dillian White, the best example. Dillian White refused, yeah. Dillian White refused to let anything. Sorry, AJ refused to let anything Dillian White hit him with hurt him. 
refused it. Number one, he didn't believe it. He didn't believe anything Dillian White threw could hurt him. Number two, anything Dillian White did throw and land, he refused to let it do fuck all. Yeah, he marched in there, and Dillian White was hitting AJ with the same shot as Usyk was, if not less, I don't know, you man tell me. And they bounced off, and he marched forward. But now, it's a bit like, I hate to break it to you, it's a bit like McTappa for me. McTappa, like I said, he went through his whole career, shots bouncing off, all of a sudden, he gets a bit of money, and he, the first thing that lands now, he's on quit, he's just not, it's madness, I've never seen anything like it. Now, AJ isn't at that, isn't at that extent, but it's all relative. We've seen AJ in there, his whole career, shots bouncing off. All of a sudden, he's in there with Usyk, and the first thing that lands, he doing it, he dancing around. Oh, I don't know what's going on, people. I don't know what's going on. It's weird. Super weird. Usyk couldn't do nothing with Chisora. Yeah? Usyk didn't, didn't rock Chisora once, and we've seen Chisora out by the same people AJ's fought. Dillian White fought Chisora. Knocked him all the way out. Usyk couldn't do enough all with Chisora. But yet you want me to believe that every two minutes Usyk was rocking AJ all over the place. No, it's, I'm sorry. It's to do with mentality. AJ, in his last few fights, based on his moist team, no one, no one in his team are leaders. And a certain type of leader. No one in his team know how to condition his mind. Because Diamato and all the great trainers would talk about the mind conditioning. AJ's talking about, oh, I need to go back to the gym and start. No. Go back to the gym and doing the same crap you've been doing. Ain't going to cut it. You need someone who understands the holistic game. Because what you're missing isn't, in my opinion, it's not the, so much the physical aspect. You should have been, the reason I bet on AJ, yeah. AJ should have been, been able to go in there tonight, regardless of having technical flaws, just based on his athleticism versus a smaller man. He should have been able to win this fight. Instead, he nearly got knocked out. That's the truth. That should never happen. Ever happen. With that kind of athlete. Never. And why was he? Why was he? Why was he happy to accept that? There's loads of times in the ring, he like for example, look at Usyk. Yeah, again, I give him credit for this. Usyk. Whenever AJ landed a heavy shot, yeah, what did Usyk do? What did the smaller man do? Did he shrivel up? Did he back up? Or did he double down? Every time AJ landed something decent, Usyk came straight back. But yet, when every time Usyk landed something, AJ shriveled up, backed up. Every time. AJ backed up and went small and shriveled up. It's like uh, uh, in the last round, the last few, the last minute or whatever. Every time AJ got hit, he shriveled up. And I've told you before. One way to guarantee yeah, someone, someone will keep coming forward is if you get hit and you don't do nothing back. If you get hit, yeah, and just stand there and back up, that never turns anyone off. I've showed you the video of Floyd Mayweather. When Floyd Mayweather gets rocked, yeah, his hands go up and he walks into it. Why? Because you can smother your opponent's work. Why? Because psychologically it turns your opponent off. If you, if you hit someone, yeah, and they come towards you, that doesn't ring alarm bells that, oh, they're hurt. If you hit someone and they start flump, f flopping backwards, <laughs> who's going to think, well, you know what, I don't fancy hitting him again? Of course you are. If you hit someone and they flop backwards, you, your, your lipstick comes right out. Yeah? But again, AJ hasn't learnt these things. AJ's doing the same mistakes he's been doing for, for the last 10 years of his career because he's got the same dead trainer, Rob McCrappen. Now, I'm not going to blame all of Rob because at the end of the day, AJ, AJ pulls the trigger. But wow. you got a cruiserweight now. Who just got off all over AJ. And AJ, in the, I mean, he's in the, he's in the post-fight bit. Taking pictures with you sick and... Talking about, oh, he's a true true. I don't know about you, man, yeah, but me. Like I said, when AJ first walked out, I thought, yeah, man, maybe he's... Pissed off, but then I saw the pictures. Oh, he's all hugging and smiling. You say, where's the, where's the spy? If it was me, yeah, I'd say, listen. F that dude. Yeah, he can take it. After I've splattered him next time, if he wants to take pictures, we can take pictures.
But you know what? Someone like Usyk, I bet if he got splattered, he probably wouldn't be fixing to take no pictures. And rightfully so. Yeah? You can all kiss and hug after... Like, I don't know, what what is it with this 2021 business, yeah? I don't... You man tell me. But I don't remember Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson and Hollifield all kissing and hugging after their fights. Do you remember that? I don't remember it. I mean, barely... Even... May, maybe these days, 30 years later they do. They can hang around each other. But I'm, I mean, it took... Literally took 10, 15, 20 years after their careers ended for these men to be able to act... Act, um... Act normally around each other. And rightfully so. Especially in this game, the fight game. Bottom line. You've just been whooped by a cruiserweight. Who just told the world that... You, you were... He, he expected you to be tougher. You weren't tough. Told the world that you weren't special. You didn't... That he didn't see nothing special in you. And you're taking pictures and... Kissing and hugging afterwards. What's there to kiss and hug about? Now, we know you're rich. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe AJ's just celebrating the fact that his pockets are paid. And if that's fair, if that's the case, fair enough. But like I said, retire. If that's the case. Well, no, but I guess AJ will argue, well, making money, which is true. Carry on. But it's a shame that it's got to that point these days. It's all about the money, it seems. Nothing else. Well, it's almost like it feels to me like, it's like oh, well, I'll go in there. If I can win, if I can win with this kind of style... Then I'll win. If I can't win doing... If I can't win just going through the motions, I'm not so bothered. I didn't see no strategy. I didn't see no oomph. I didn't see no commitment. I didn't see no pride. Where was the pride? There was one point in AJ's career, yeah? If someone hit him... When Dillian White hit him, he wanted to hit them back. Even Klitschko. When Klitschko hit him, he wanted to hit Klitschko back. There's no pride now. Well, the only pride I hear or see is when he, AJ wants to prove he's a boxer. Oh, I wanted to prove I could box and I'm going to outbox you sick. Oops. How'd that work out for you? Got whooped. That's how it worked out. You got whooped and then he knocked out. There's no pride. I mean, it might be funny again after the Usyk, after the Ruiz loss. That, sh that really showed us what I told you, man, about. You got stopped by Ruiz, a dude who's 300 pounds. There was no excuse for anything less than... Going in there and opening them up. Instead, we got what we got. And everyone made excuses for it. Oh, well, you know. You're either the greatest of all time or you're not. Or you are, you either want to be one of the greatest of all time or you don't. If you don't, make it clear. Say, listen, guys, truth is, I just want to be a mediocre fighter. I'm not trying to be the best in the world. Or the best, in, the best of all time. Because if you are, the best of all time, Ruiz gets splattered. You sit, get splattered. If you, the way you fight at the moment, it's like you're trying to go for the motions. Well, you know, yeah, I've got great genetics, but I'm just trying to go for the motions, people. I'm not trying to push the boat out. I'm not trying to commit to anything. I'm just happy making 30, 40 million a pop. Just, just, just going for the motions and not risking too much. And I told you before, these, these fighters, when they think about not risking too much, you end up even worse off, if that makes sense. By going in there and having this loosey-goosey approach, you end up worse off than you would have been if, you, if you'd gone in there and committed. Because you guess what? Even with this loosey-goosey, low-risk and negative approach, you still nearly got knocked out. Oops. By a cruiserweight who can't punch, who we know couldn't hurt anyone at heavyweight, or really couldn't hurt no one at cruiserweight. So a man who can't punch at cruiserweight, all of a sudden, and they knocked you out. Wow. That's where Lucy Goosey gets you. That's where, no, we ain't really got a plan. We're just going in there to go through the motions. So if anyone in AJ's team ever sees this, this is your man's. Your man's. You sick. Him and his team laughing and joking about uh, at your expense, in my opinion. You're sitting there taking photos and he's sitting there telling people how he expected more from you. How you were soft. How you weren't tough. You know, he ain't. By the way, people, Usyk fans, don't get me wrong. I'm not calling Usyk a liar. He's, Usyk's right. He weren't tough. He, AJ didn't didn't, turn, didn't didn't show nothing special in there. I'm just saying, from AJ's point of view, he should see this and think, fuck this guy. Who do you think he's talking to about not tough? Who do you think he's talking to about not special? I'm going to show him not special. I'm going to show him not tough. 
Let's see how not tough this big fat job is in his clock. Instead, what do we get? No, in the first fight we got there was no stiff jab, there was no stiff it was all just sloppy. But anyway, I'm I'm done going around in circles. Usyk, he rock hard right now, and rightfully so. He getting off on AJ fans and AJ. And it's what all we get in consolation is AJ taking pictures with my man. Usyk tells you you're not tough. Usyk tells you you're not special and you'd be taking photos. Like I said, I don't remember seeing anything like this. For example, when when Lennox Lewis got whooped by Rahman or the other one, can you man show me the photos of Lewis in the in the changing room kissing and hugging and, and all excited? I don't remember seeing that. Or when Lennox Lewis beat Mike Tyson. I don't remember seeing well, I think I think Mike was shot. Yeah, Mike Mike was finished then, but in, in the primes. In the primes, in the Hollyfield ones or whatever. They weren't kissing and hugging and whatnot. So either you're finished or you're not. If you're finished, then it makes sense. Why well, you're kissing and hugging everyone. And you just want to be that guy. Be everyone's friend. It's almost like AJ wants to be everyone's friend. He ain't trying to rock the boat. Oh yeah, let's take pictures and let's kiss and let's, let's play with each other's kids and whatnot. And, I mean, even coming out. On the walkout, AJ's going and hugging and... Eddie Hearn said that he was meeting all of the people he knew from the crowd. and It's almost like, oh yeah, I've got a big event on and come down people. It's almost like AJ felt he was hosting a party. Yeah, it's a big party. I want to make sure I see all the guests. And What? He's got a big fight. Look at how prime Mike Tyson used to walk out. He weren't kissing and hugging people's wives. And shit. See? Let's crack on. That's what you do. At best, yeah, that's what you do after the fight. After you've got the work in. Because if I was in AJ's camp, yeah, if I was running AJ's camp, that changing room would be a zone, if that makes sense. What we do in that changing room is preparation for war. It's not hugging and kissing people's wives on the walkout. It's, what, is, what is this? We're we about to get it. There ain't no kissing and hugging people's wives about it. We're about to go in there and execute a vicious game plan. Our opponent may not make it out of the ring tonight. Yeah? We ain't got no time to be kissing people's wives. This is serious business. If, we, if we've done our job correctly, we're about to literally end up t half taking someone's life. That's, how the, that's, what the, that, that's what my vibe would be. There ain't no kissing and hugging about it. There ain't no party entertaining about it. They said, what do you think this is? Some big social... It's almost like AJ thought it was a big social media event. Oh, we got all the celebrities here and... Oh, look, there's Mo Fowler. Let's go and say hello to him quickly. And What is this? Because I'll tell you how it looks. That's how it looks to people. And, and, and if you disagree, show me something to the contrary. Show me, yeah, at one point in any of this where you've thought, why be you wrong? Look at this part. This is where we saw AJ was super duper serious. He was on site. Show me where. Because it weren't in taking photos of everyone after the fight. It weren't kissing and hugging people's wives on the walkout. It weren't smiling and goofing off with you sick before the fight. And for all this time, yeah, I've let it slide. Oh, I be his winning. His this is that. Now he's not winning. So what? Oops. I told you. Too late now, though. Every single time this happens, it's a notch against his resume, a notch against his greatness. Getting and, and, and this wasn't even a good loss. In my opinion, where you can say, well, why be? He just got Floyd Mayweather. For example, when Floyd Mayweather beat Alvarez, yeah, I can honestly say, when Floyd Mayweather beat Alvarez, that was a case of the better man won. Alvarez had no ideas. It was night and day. So he got schooled properly. But this, in my opinion, this Usyk fight wasn't a case of, in my opinion, I'm sure many people will disagree, but in my opinion, yeah, this Usyk fight versus AJ wasn't a case of, oh, it's night and day between the two, and oh, it's obvious that Usyk has AJ's number 100%. No. That wasn't the case. AJ, if AJ had, for example, what I'm saying is, if AJ had gone in there, yeah, he's jab driving forward, cutting the ring off aggressively, yes, taking shots on the way in, Potentially, but all coming forward, putting it uppercuts and hooks together, getting his game off 
If AJ had to come in doing that year and Usyk was able to negate that and win, that would have been a performance where I said, you know what, people? And I said, I've said, and you know what? The crazy thing is about this. What have I been saying for all this time, ever since the Ruiz loss? I said, listen, I'd rather see AJ lose fighting this way. Because we can all work with that. Not one AJ fan yet would have complained if we saw AJ committing, cutting the ring off, getting on the inside, tight defense, working on the inside. If we just saw, if we just seen a stiff jab, a Parker versus an AJ versus Parker jab and right hand, and then inside work like the cam. What's the cam fight? AJ's in there just working. If we just seen that performance yet, and Usyk was so slick or so good, he won. I'd have tipped my hat and said, you know what? We, at the end of the day, Usyk's just too good. Just a bit like Alvarez versus Mayweather. Mayweather, too good. We didn't see that tonight. Now, I'm not saying Usyk wouldn't have won, but what I am saying is, AJ lost this fight. Usyk didn't win it. Usyk didn't do nothing suit that special. AJ was that bad and that average. Usyk won. 100% about that. I'm not denying that. But there's differences here. You, when when Alvarez got beat by Mayweather, he was out of ideas. He didn't know what day it was. AJ, just going through the motions. And it's interesting. Alvarez learnt a lot from that Mayweather fight. In my opinion, AJ didn't learn nothing about this about himself in this fight. What, what, what did he learn? He didn't learn nothing about it. Because he didn't do anything to learn. For example, you can learn. If you commit to a strategy yeah, and go in there... And your opponent offsets it. Then that's a learning experience. Oh, I tried to cut the ring off, but he was doing this. I tried to do that, but he... I tried to fight on the inside, but he was doing this. What did AJ try to do, but failed? And he can therefore learn from... What did... You, you man, tell me. Tell me one or two or three things that he did. That he tried to actively implement. Round after round, but failed. No, we didn't see nothing like that. All we saw was a bunch of loosey-goosey, wishy-washy rubbish. We saw a slow... A slow, what's the word? We saw a slow, laboured right hand. A slow, laboured jab. No no hooks did I see. No uppercuts did I see. No trying to get on the inside did I see. No... no. <laughs> but anyway, no more time spent on this. You heard Usyk. He rock hard. He getting off all over AJ right now. Yeah, he told you, listen. Not impressed. I could have knocked him out if I wanted to, and it is what it is. What's AJ going? Like, the feeling I got, the feeling I got yeah from these last interviews from from music was that yeah I'm going to tell AJ he no good. Yeah I'm going to tell AJ he not special. Yeah I'm going to tell AJ he not tough. But what's he going to do about it? Nothing. That's the feeling I got. I got the feeling that music feels comfortable saying these things because he feels like well what's AJ going to do? He ain't gonna do nothing about it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can, because think about it. You've just had a fight with someone, and you're telling the world that nothing special. He's not that tough. I thought he'd be tougher. That clearly, bearing in mind you know you've got a rematch. You still ain't got no fear. He's not scared to poke the bear. He's not scared to poke the lion. He's got no fear at all. Not even a little bit of a fear has he got. And I can't blame him. But I'm just putting out it to AJ. Have you got any shame? Have you got any ego or pride? Because if you have, it'd be best to see it now. Truth be known. Because the truth is, what I think is going to happen, AJ going to go in there and he's going to try and Andy Ruiz to it. Oh, well, I'll run around now and I'll go, I'll, I'll go back to what I did last time. That's what I think coming next. AKA, a no pride, no ego having us performance. There was no pride in that Ruiz performance. That was pathetic in my opinion. 